Good evening, Midway family. It's so good to be able to come to you tonight from my house tonight. And I know that you are all home as well. And wow, it's been a, a crazy few weeks, hasn't it? As we've been uh, really just bound to our homes and not been able to do much. But uh, I tell you what, we've uh, at my house been able to make some great memories together and, and do some things that we've been wanting to do for a long time, whether it's working in the yard or doing projects or just spending time together playing games or making all kinds of memories. And we pray that you are as well. Uh, we also want to come to you tonight asking that you would continue to pray for Pastor Grant uh, and also Pastor Craig. Pastor Craig is now home recovering. We're so thankful for that. But pray for Pastor Grant as he's still in the hospital uh, receiving treatment. He's getting better and stronger every day. And we just pray and hope that he will continue to do that. We also want to let you know that Pastor Bob Johnson has also been tested and has received a positive result uh, for COVID-19. He does have the coronavirus. And we are continuing to pray for Pastor Bob and Miss Yvonne as he is at home uh, dealing with this sickness. And we are just praying for his full and speedy, quick recovery. So you join with me in prayer uh, in these days ahead for Pastor Bob as well. We wanted to make you know uh, make that information available to you so that you would know that and know how to exactly pray uh, for these men of God in our church. And pray for our church, our leadership, that no one else will have, have caught this disease and, and that we will be able to uh, get back to our normal duties and our normal responsibilities and our normal ministry habits as soon as possible. Tonight, I want to bring just a challenge to you from the Word of God. I want to try to encourage us as we look into God's Word together uh, but also uh, just help us to, to see the importance of, of what it is we are facing in these days uh, and really focus our eyes on Jesus. It's so easy to uh, get caught up in what we see on the news or what we talk about together on social media or other outlets uh, when the reality is uh, we need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Uh, this is Holy Week. It's Passion Week. The week leading up to the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we want to focus our eyes solely on him tonight and what it was that he did for us. And even in the events leading up to that, I believe there are some important things that we could see in the life of Jesus and what he taught leading up to his death, burial, and resurrection. And we, we're going to look back in the book of John. Uh, I read a little bit of the book of John, chapter 12, earlier this week uh, in, a, in a devotion online. Uh, but I want to go back to the first part of John, chapter 12, with you tonight. And I want to bring you a really a brief a challenge, a message. And it's simply called this, While We Can. So grab your Bibles with me right now and turn back to John, chapter 12. And we're going to start in verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. I recently read this, that six days before the Passover, John gave a time marker, telling us that this was the last week before the death and the burial of of Jesus. Almost one half of John's gospel was given to this last week. Matthew, he used more than 33% of his gospel to cover this week. Mark, nearly 40%. And Luke, over 25% of his writing was to the seven days of Jesus' entire life. First of all, I believe that that this is because what we are going to learn from the life of Jesus during this time is eternally important. It has eternal significance for you and for I. Secondly, Jesus was here uh, to more than likely celebrate the resurrection of Lazarus with his family. But he was the guest of honor at this gathering. Martha was serving. Lazarus was sitting but Mary was worshiping. Verse three, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor 
of the ointment. See, I believe we see in this verse here that, that her worship was given in humility. You see, oil was usually placed on the head, but pouring it on his feet required her to bow to her knees. She worshiped humbly in humility. Also, her worship was done extremely. The cost of this oil, if you think about it, would have provided a year's wages for an entire family. And she didn't use water or anything like that that was really easily and readily accessible and available. She used a precious commodity that had been reserved for such a time as this. Her worship was also unselfconscious. She wasn't concerned about what others thought. Obviously, everyone knew what she had done because the Bible teaches us here that the, the odor of this ointment and this oil filled the entire house. So everyone that was there, they knew what she had done, but yet she was not self-conscious. She was not ashamed at all about the extravagant, extreme worship she was giving to Jesus. It was also considered an act of loose morals during this time for a Jewish woman to let down her hair. Yet she did just that. She wasn't concerned about what anyone else thought about the way that she worshiped Jesus. So her worship was in humility. It was, it was done extremely and it lacked any self-consciousness at all. She wasn't concerned about, about what anyone thought, which I believe begs the question for us. What is the extent of our devotion and our worship to Jesus? Would it be characterized by the same description of Mary's worship, humble, extreme, not self-conscious. But you know, everyone, or not everyone, was approving of Mary's posture toward Jesus. And guess what? They're not going to be of ours either. Verse 4 says this, Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bare what was put therein. You see, first of all, Judas' response was only really an explanation of his dark, hardened heart to Jesus himself. His posture was also the opposite of Mary's. While she was humble, he was proud. While her worship was extreme, he was selfish. And while she was unselfconscious, he was self-preserving. Like Judas, we can't fool God with self-righteousness that attempts to cover up our dark heart because our heart will always be revealed. And then in verse seven through eight, we see the response of Jesus. Verse seven, then Jesus said, let her alone against the day of my bearing hath she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Someone wrote, wrote this one time. If we are extreme in our love for Jesus, he will not criticize us. That was what Judas did. It is much better to be like Mary, extreme in our love for Jesus, than to be like Judas, criticizing others who show such great love for Jesus. In verse 8, Jesus reminded Judas, and really anyone else that was listening, that there's going to be other opportunities to care for the poor and to do good things. For those around us. Hey, these things are all good, but they are not the most important things. Jesus was fixing to leave this world, and Mary was worshiping him while she could. That's so important. The Lord said back in Genesis, My spirit shall not always strive with man. And Jesus has just said, but ye have not me always. 
Is, is it possible that God is allowing us to go through this pandemic to show us what we don't need in an effort to show us what we do need? I believe that it is. And here are a few things that I believe uh, that we as people need to do while we can. Some things that we should do while we can. First of all, individuals, you and I, we need to take the extra time and the quietness that we've been given to draw close to God and his presence. We need, we need to schedule our day around talking to God through prayer, through reading his word, through meditating on his goodness and what he has for our lives. Do this while we can. Families need to make memories together. Parents, we need to take this extra time that we have and be thankful for it, that we have, a, we have more time to speak in personally, one-on-one, -on -one, to the lives of our children while we can. Christians need to be humble and extreme and unselfconscious in our worship to Jesus and our testimony to others while we can. But also I believe that people who are lost and who are away from God need to listen to his voice and turn to him while you can. If we've learned anything in the last few weeks as a society, I, I believe that it's this. We will not always have the luxuries of this life at our fingertips, will we? We are learning that there are some things that really we can do without. But there's one thing in this world that we cannot do without. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Christians, I want to encourage you tonight. Spend time with Jesus while you can. Spend time with your families while you can. Spend time doing the things that are the most important in this life, and they are spiritual things, while you can. And maybe you're listening to me tonight, and you just kind of happen to pro across this broadcast, and, and maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you don't know who it is I'm even talking about. Maybe you're away from God. Maybe you know who God is, but you just have no relationship with him at all. My plea to you tonight is this. Come to Jesus while you can. You can do that as simple as this. Saying, Jesus, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I surrender my life to you. Take control of my life. Cause me to have a heart for you that lives for you, that chases after you. And person, I promise if you'll do that, he will come into your life. He will make you a new creation in him. And he will fix your eyes upon himself where they should be. That's my prayer for you tonight. That's my prayer for all of us that our eyes will be fixed on the one who came to die for us that we might have eternal life. And so my encouragement to you today is this, to keep strong in Jesus. Be strong in the Lord. Keep your eyes fixed on him. He will carry us through this to the end. He has the victory. We are claiming the promise that he has never left us and he will never forsake us now. So I encourage you Christians to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Pray like you never have. Witness like you never have. Encourage others like you never have before while we can. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, praying that we would just fix our eyes on you, that you would hear us, that we would draw close to you, that God, you would, that you would heal our nation. Bring us to our knees, God, that we may fix our eyes upon the one thing that really matters, and that is our relationship with you. God, we, we pray for our pastor. We pray for Pastor Craig. Pray for Pastor Bob. And Pastor Grant, God, may you touch these men. May you, may you bring them to full healing. God, bring us back together uh, as a body of Christ that we may worship together. We may uh, live together in unity, serving our community well, and doing what you called us to do. But until then, God, we're going to keep on trusting you. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Midway family, thank you for joining me tonight. I want to encourage you to be ready to worship this weekend and spend time with your family over the next few days just talking about the events of Christ, his, his laboring and prayer in the garden, his betrayal by his own disciples, which led to his arrest and his death on the cross, and then his burial in the tomb, but ultimately winning the victory over death, hell, and the grave Sunday morning as he raised from the dead, bringing us new life. Until then, I love you. God bless you. And we'll see you right here on Facebook, YouTube, and our website, mid-way.com, Sunday morning at 9.30, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus.